Welcome to this webinar, which provides an introduction and insights on the theme Effective Outdoor Learning Environments. These insights take account of research, as well as inspectors' findings in early learning and care settings, and the advice provided by inspectors to promote improvement. All of the advice provided in this webinar should be considered in light of the prevailing public health guidelines, which apply in educational settings. This series of webinars is concerned with the ongoing planning and creation and the ever-changing organisation and the maintenance of effective outdoor learning environments. This, the first webinar of the series, will provide an introduction and overview of what we mean by effective outdoor learning environments. There is also a webinar focused on provision in early learning and care settings and one for primary schools. The three webinars are rich in imagery which has been gathered from schools and early learning and care settings in city and town centre settings where space may be limited, in rural settings and in settings that use nearby amenities on a regular basis. Experience from early years inspections confirms that children simply love to play outside and never tire of exploring nature. The significance of this play in nature is emphasised in the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child which sets out the following factors for an optimum environment. In an early years and primary context, these points are worth noting. Accessibility of space and time for play, space and opportunities to play outdoors in a diverse and challenging physical environment with easy access to supportive adults when necessary. Availability of leisure time free from other demands. Opportunities to experience, interact with and play in natural environments and the animal world. Opportunities to invest in their own space and time so as to create and transform their world using their imagination and languages. In the Irish context, ASHTER, the Early Childhood Curriculum Framework and SHILTA, the National Quality Framework for Early Childhood Education, are the frameworks which underpin the work with children from birth to six years of age. They offer guidance and support to parents, practitioners and teachers on the delivery of enjoyable and challenging learning experiences and learning environments so that all children can grow and develop as competent and confident learners within loving relationships with others. Within Ashter, it is noted that the outdoors is one of the best learning environments for young children, providing an opportunity to explore, experience and make meaning of the natural world. Play in a natural outdoor learning environment encourages the children to engage in exploring and thinking of and about their physical environment. Outdoor play can positively benefit a child's well-being as connections are made with peers and the natural environment. In addition, the children experience moments in nature which allow time to reflect. Children excitedly chat about the changing seasons and all the wonders of nature. When children explore in a well-planned outdoor learning environment, they have opportunities to see themselves as capable learners as they assess and take risks. This improves their sense of identity and belonging. Across the standards of SHILTA, the outdoor environment is highlighted as an important learning environment. In particular, the second standard called environment supports outdoor play as it tells us that both indoor and outdoor environments should be well planned and accommodate the needs of the child. Whether you're a parent, a practitioner or a teacher, you could use the online Ashter Shield to Practice Guide to help you plan, organise and evaluate your outdoor area. This guide will assist you to critically reflect on the outdoor experience that you offer your children. It can also help you to acknowledge what is working well and lets you identify priorities for development and plan actions for positive change. You will find a link to it on the last slide. Similarly, the audit tool in the Universal Design Guidelines publication may also support you. Inspections of early years education settings are based on a quality framework, which outlines the importance of the learning environment. It further highlights the importance of reflective practice to continuously inform planning, review and improvement of the environment. The signposts for practice 
indicate that the creation, maintenance and continuous adjustment of the learning environments by the adult is required in order to improve experiences and outcomes for children. Inspectors have observed a broad range of learning environments in a variety of early learning and care settings across the country. This webinar will provide a practical introduction in regard to the outdoor learning environment to help you to strive for the highest quality of provision. As mentioned above, this webinar is mainly concerned with the outdoor learning environment. However, as some settings do not have their own outdoor area, it takes into account ideas about bringing the outdoors inside. Now that we have recapped on the key documents, let us consider some crucial points in relation to effective outdoor learning environments. Before we explore the area of outdoor environments as educators and parents, we need to realise and understand that the effective outdoor learning environments support activity and for the children, the most important activity is play. First of all, it is important to mention that the context of each home, setting and school will be unique. Some families, settings and schools are lucky enough to have big green spaces with versatile landscapes available to them. While some have small tarmacadam or safety surface backyards and the schools might have a concrete yard, Others might not have their own outdoor area at all. Straight away, this makes it obvious that there is no one size fits all scenario possible. Settings and schools might have access to local green areas, playgrounds, forests, beaches or fields. In any case, inspection findings show that professional knowledge and know-how coupled with creativity and flexibility overcome space restrictions and limitations. As we consider an environment, we need to ask ourselves, can the children become active agents? Can they realise their own ideas and follow their own interests? We also need to ask ourselves if the environment provides open-ended, versatile, natural, manipulative materials. In addition, we need to consider if the landscape is challenging and inspiring, and if it aids physical fitness and development. As already noted, you might not have access to an immediate outdoor environment, and therefore you could consider bringing nature inside. For example, sand, earth, water play, natural materials such as pine cones, conkers, seashells. You could also take trips to natural areas such as greens, gardens, parks, seaside and woodlands on a more regular basis where the children can follow their interests and ideas and explore nature. Whatever your context, it's important to be practical and to think about storage and accessibility in the outdoor environment. Similar to the indoor environment, everything must have its home in the outdoor environment. The children should be able to have autonomous access to materials and resources as much as possible. By creating a home for all the equipment, material and resources, the children will be able to tidy up, organise and keep the environment clean and aesthetically pleasing, similar to the indoor environment. Not all the materials can be left outside. Some might need a shed or a covered area. Covered areas provide an extra benefit and considering the Irish weather, these are extremely beneficial so that the children can enjoy outdoor play all year round. On that note, inspectors often comment on the commendable use of full rainproof clothing in Wellingtons, which enables children and practitioners to play outside in almost every weather. Many schools and preschools around the country have built outdoor classrooms and shelters so that the children can spend more time outside. The next slide aims to support parents to gain a broader and deeper understanding of the components of an effective outdoor learning environment. And we will also touch on the importance of play in the outdoors in both early learning and care settings and primary schools. Research shows us that fewer children play outdoors and that outdoor play is increasingly centred in the home rather than in the garden, local parks, woodlands or beaches. Outdoor play environments don't have to be complex or feature expensive equipment. Hart, a well-renowned researcher of early childhood, notes that children value natural wild places for play and when they are given the choice, children will prioritise play in bushes and long grass over groomed playing fields or playground equipment. There is a growing body of evidence to suggest that play in a nature-rich outdoor environment, such as a garden, woodland or beach, 
helps to promote childhood mental health, supporting children to develop intrinsic interests, problem solving skills and regulate emotions. Let's consider the plentiful learning opportunities presented in a short walk to your local park. Road and pedestrian safety can be discussed on the way. Walking together shows the value you place on physical health and well-being and experiencing together what nature has to offer, whether in city, town or countryside. When rich in plants, rocks, sticks and featuring some elements of risk, an outdoor learning environment offers unique stimuli. Such an environment captures and sustains a child's engagement and concentration and supports the child to learn lifelong skills in how to overcome challenges in an autonomous way. In early learning and care settings, inspectors note that outdoor play is different to play that occurs in an indoor learning environment. Inspectors frequently advise settings to facilitate outdoor play in all seasons and weather. The outdoors is an open and constantly changing environment. Playing outdoors in autumn, winter, spring and summer presents its own unique opportunities for exploration and learning. Embracing play in all weathers is crucial for children's ongoing development and understanding of the seasons, nature and the environment in which they live. Of course, children need to be suitably dressed when going outside. We may associate play in winter weather conditions with getting colds and illnesses. However, encouraging outdoor play in winter enables children to gain much needed exposure to fresh air and vitamin D, which support a healthy immune system. To achieve the goal of optimizing the time in the outdoor environment, parents could consider providing materials that will spark interest for their child to engage in play outdoors. These could include mixing bowls with sand or water and a magnifying glass to encourage investigation of insects and animals enabling children to climb and to swing, even from a rope suspended from a tree, offers vital development for the whole body. It is very beneficial to provide materials that allow for large and small muscle play, such as balance bicycles, balls, and to plant a pot with flowers. A rich play environment is one where children of all ages are able to make a wide range of choices and where there are many possibilities so that they can invent and extend their own play. It is a varied, inspirational and interesting physical environment that maximizes the potential for socializing, creativity, resourcefulness and challenge. It's a place where children feel free to play in their own way on their own terms. The United Nations Committee on the Rights of the Child, UNRC 1991, define rich and optimum environments for play with key features, including the opportunity to freely interact with or experience the following. Other children of various ages and capabilities, the natural world, loose parts, the natural elements, challenge, playing with identity, movement, feelings. Now we have an opportunity to look at some pictures of effective learning environments in schools and early learning and care settings. Here we see a child playing with sticks of varying length. This may invite the child to investigate and be creative. And in this case, we know that the child was serving lunch. In this image, the children have used loose materials to engage in creative expression. Similarly, in this third picture, a variety of loose materials was used to create a birthday cake. Recycled and upcycled materials, such as pallets and cable reels, can add interest and functionality to an aesthetically pleasing natural environment. And these photos show purposefully built raised beds where children grow vegetables and flowers. Covered areas provide sheltered spaces for play, bridging indoor and outdoor environments. An old boat provides a meeting place for children and encourages imaginative and sociodramatic play. Children can use magnifying glasses to get a close up look at nature's features. A playhouse provides children with ample opportunity for sociodramatic play. Children can use loose parts and irregularly shaped materials that they find outdoors for construction play. Such play requires refined motor skills and perseverance. 
Here you see a mud kitchen, at which there has clearly been much activity. The children use many utensils, earth and sand, to prepare a treat for their friends. Here is a list of further information and resources which may support you. This brings us to the close of this webinar and we would like to thank you for listening. We hope it provides helpful advice. If you have direct queries or comments arising from your engagement with this webinar, please use the dedicated email address provided to send your comments to us on insights underscore info at education.gov.ie. We wish to thank all for the beautiful images shared with us for this webinar. Goodbye.